I'm meeting my friends, I said. He shook his head. Train's empty. I looked around. I admit, I was frightened. My phone beeps. <gasps> Ding. Trying to call you. Full stop. Leave tomorrow. The guard looked at it. Maybe it's you should be leaving. <gasps> There's a body, guys. Oh. We found a body. She's got a knife in her hand. Just being yeah. like, I'm going to shank a goat. Yeah. <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> that's the most horrible thing of that's creeping me out. Why is it in a tin? That, I live in fear of going off in my flat every yeah, day. Yeah, put it in the fucking bin. No, it's haunted and it's here. And so is the owl. Look at that owl. It's owl it's, it's, that eyes are bulging out of its fucking face. <laughs> Welcome to Ghost Hunt. <laughs> Welcome to Ghost Hunt <coughs> Christmas special. Way! That won't stop going, will it? <laughs> is that going to carry on all the way through? Anyway, how are you, Hannah? I'm Hannah Spanner. Not well. She's not well. She's never well. Hanging up, never. I do not once I've done this podcast and I've been well. Mm. This time it is my fault. I am. I am hungover. Oh. I'm very hungover. I'm sorry. Should have stopped at the whiskies. Oh. Do you know what I mean? You went on to the yeah the neat whiskies. The spirits. <gasps> Fitting. Huh? I don't know why I keep looking over there. I don't either. Just to look at you. Yeah. Um. So I'm you. Very hungover. Are you? Yeah. What did you have? I Let's had lots it. of beer, I had lots of whiskey, mm -hmm. and then, oh, vodka tonics. Vod. Vodka tonics in the end, yeah. which was pretty bad, because, and do you know, this is why I hate dating, because you have to go out and enjoy yourself. Yeah, yeah, you do have to burn the candle, don't you? I am absolutely fucking exhausted. <laughs> but are you happy? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Are you now essentially living with him? Pretty much, yeah. It's quite uh, whirlwind, isn't it? Yeah, it's quite, we can off. Moved in. Uh, no, I haven't moved in. But he did say last night, let's go Let's go back to ours. I was like, oh. So ours, is it? What Maybe. about the um, What about the little dog? The little chihuahua? The little dog. The little dog, um, uh, Rosie. Rosie, she's Rosie, great. Rosie, the yeah. chihuahua. Ch chihuahua. <laughs> yeah, she's great. Do you feel quite an affinity towards Rosie? She, she keeps cock blocking me, if I'm honest with you. Yeah. Was he quite in obsessed bed. with the dog? Well, the oh, dog in just bed. Went, yeah, the dog just literally was there. I was like, bit of, bit of morning fun time. Mm -hmm. Look over and the and Rosie's fucking Rosie's, staring at you yeah. like, get off like, him. Yeah, <laughs> fucking go away, Leave you him piece alone. of shit. <laughs> I'll claw your eyes yeah. out. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, so she has a bit of a cock block. Wow, to be fair. she's quite cute though. She's really cute. Yeah, she's really cute. Yeah, um, but I could do with you know uh, regularly having sex. Oh, well, that, we did good. predict it. We did, well, we predicted a gangbang, if yeah, you remember rightly, in a brothel, and that hasn't happened yeah. yet, so I'm a bit disappointed. Well, little, little baby uh, although, steps. you know, that, that, when I said, I'm, mm. I hope my mum isn't listening to this, I listened to it oh. in the car with my mum, so I forgot <laughs> how fucked up on cough syrup I was. Oh, I think no. I was drunk. <laughs> I think I was drunk on cough syrup. So now my mum is listening She's to me. She's heard it all, your Beecham's... Oh, yeah, I'm a Beecham's rant. Dream of thought. But yeah, Dream that, I'm fine. Uh, just very hungover. How are you? Um, I'm all right. I've got a, a little tickly throat, so it probably is COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. So it probably is COVID. Uh, I think it might be COVID. To be fair, I think I've given um, it to all of you. Yeah. Do you know what? I've <coughs> never, never had it. I'm one of those. I've never had COVID. Never had it. Well, not that I know of. Is it because we don't test? <laughs> And we've been ill loads of times, Maybe. but we just don't. I've never had COVID. Only a member. Where's my lung gone? <laughs> yeah, no, I've never had COVID. We've got two lungs, technically, right? Huh? Anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> so really happy to be here. Yeah, Merry, Merry Christmas. Merry this is Christmas. coming out on the twentieth, so technically four days until Christmas Eve. <gasps> ah! I am That's so in the Christmas nice. spirit. I don't know how horrible a noise that was because no, I don't, I don't I have headphones it. on. It's really weird. feels weird. It does feel weird. Maybe we'll have... I feel like I'm on, I'm on edge. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Well, you are on edge because of that. I'm so incredibly <laughs> hungover. I feel like absolute shit. But the, you know what the best thing to do with a hangover? What? Scare yourself. Yeah, I agree. Mm. I completely agree. And I also, um, yeah. Bernard and Bianca, I wasn't talking about them. I was talking about Faisal. No, no idea what you're talking about, Hannah. Faisal? Yeah, that's what it's called. Who's called, Faisal when he's at well, home? He was like, oh, do you know what? I'm going to have to leave. <laughs> <laughs> Not this again. That's the one that was like, I want to be in America. 
America. Okay, I can only find Hafsa Faisal, which I don't think it's him. Oh, oh. Is it from something called an American tale? That American hey. tale! Yay! That's it. It's not the rescuers. It was an American tale, and they are racist. <laughs> Apparently like us. So. Uh, so they are, say it all together, <laughs> racist. Racist. That's um, the vibe. Um, <coughs> okay. Do you want to kick off with a story? I, I know I you're can. excited about it. I am excited. The thing is, I hope I haven't, I hope I haven't fucked it up, because it's, it's, it was initially incredibly long. But okay. I've 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 cut it down quite a lot. But my dulcet tones, I can't hear them without earphones. I don't know how awful we oh, are. Oh yeah. I think you're gonna sound lovely. Do you? Do yeah. I sound lovely now with my coughing and spluttering and coughing up my own arsehole? Up your own arsehole? Cough how are you managing up. that? <laughs> coughing up my arsehole <laughs> with <laughs> Hannah Bish <Pichkoski. laughs> <just> my arsehole. <laughs> my arsehole in my mouth. <laughs> and she's like, I don't do bum talk. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's just laughing again. <laughs> Can't, you know what I mean? It's terrifying. It's, it's oh. worse without the headphones. Is it? Oh yeah. no. Yeah. This like... is bad. <laughs> it's a bad episode. Okay, no, it's Christmas, remember? It's Christmas. So... Well, I've got a very Christmassy tale. Great. It's called <laughs> a dot. <laughs> Do I oh. just sound sarcastic? No, no, I? Yeah. <laughs> you do. Oh, is it that? Is it Susie's insincerity again? <laughs> Plastic, really, really ugly head. Okay, so this is called A Dark Christmas. Mm. We had borrowed the house from a friend none of us seemed to know. High fallen house stood overlooking the sea. The large bay windows looked down through the pines towards the shore. Six stone steps led the visitors up to the double front door where a gothic bell pull released a loud, mournful clang deep into the distance of the house. Clang's not a very nice word, is it? Clangers. Clank. Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. Can you carry on, please? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the walled garden had been locked up in 1914 oh. when the gardeners went to war. What is going on? <laughs> that scared me. There's some banging and cracking. <coughs> okay, I could have definitely got rid of that bit. Fuck it. <laughs> the walled garden had been locked up in 1914 when the gardeners went to war. Only one had returned. I had been warned that the high brick wall enclosing the garden was unsafe. As I passed it slowly in the car, I saw a faded notice falling off the paint peeled door. Do not enter. Ooh. I was the first to arrive. My friends were following by train and I was to collect them the next day and then we would settle down to Christmas. I had driven from Bristol and I was tired. There was a Christmas tree roped on top of my 4 by 4 and a trunk load of provisions. We were not near any town. But the housekeeper had left stacked wood to build a fire and I had bought a shepherd's pie and a bottle of Rioja for my first night in the house. That sounds Lovely, nice, doesn't it? Yeah. Shepherd's pie wouldn't be my first. I think it's bullshit. But, you know. Why do you think it's bullshit? It's boring, isn't it? It's so plain. There's no taste yeah. to it. It's fucking shitty mints. <laughs> shit, <laughs> shit, shitty mints? I hate shitty that's, mints. That, that's, that's my drag name. <laughs> <laughs> well, mints. it can't be because that's my porn name. <laughs> <laughs> shitty mints. I prefer a lasagna. Let's put it that way. Oh, 100%. Lasagna and Rioja. 100% yeah. lasagna, mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway, the kitchen was cheerful enough once I had got the fire going and the radio playing while I unpacked our festive supplies. I checked my phone. No signal. Absolutely fucking classic. Still, I knew the time of the train tomorrow and it was a relief to feel that the world had gone away. I put my food in the oven to heat up, poured a glass of wine and went upstairs to find myself a bedroom. The first landing had three bedrooms leading off it. Each had a moth-eaten rug a metal bed and a mahogany chest of drawers. Who gives a fuck? At the far end of the landing was the second set of stairs up to the attic floor. I'm not romantic about maids rooms or nurseries, but there was something about that second set of stairs that made me hesitate. Romantic about nurseries? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is that about? I'm not romantic about nurseries, you it's know. It's maids rooms and nurseries, to be fair. It doesn't make it any no? less weird. Okay, fine, fine, no, that's true, no, wow. that's right, yeah. Okay. I am not romantic about maids' rooms or nurseries, and there was something about that second set of stairs that just made me hesitate. The landing was bright in the sudden way of the late sun on a winter's afternoon, yet the light ended abruptly at the foot of the stairs, as though it couldn't go any further. As I went to bring up my bag, the house bell started to ring, its jerky metallic hammers sounding somewhere in the guts of the house. It's gross, isn't it? I quite like that though. Do you? The guts. Yeah. The it's quite you know, and they describe it as the bowels. The bowels of the house. The bowels of the house. Yeah, yeah. That's grim, isn't it? I expected the housekeeper. I opened the door. There was no one there. I looked around. I admit, I was frightened. The night was clear and soundless. There was no car in the distance. 
No footsteps walking away. Determined to conquer my fear, I walked around a little. Then, turning back to the house, I saw it. The bell wire, you'll like this bit, the bell wire ran along the side of the house under a sheltering gutter. Perhaps 30 or 40 bats Ooh. were dangling upside down. Oh, I like bats. They're nice a bit and fucking weird, isn't they're it? They're a bit furry, like this one. And then it says, obviously their movement on the wire had set off the bell. I like bats. Clever bats. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Clever bats. No, Good. that's a really weird couple of sentences, is it not? <laughs> I like bats. Clever bats. Good. I thought that was fucking I feel bad. like I wrote this. Yeah. I, I, I really relate. I'll be, I saw this going a different way. Yeah. You, like, fucking ripping into it, and now you wish you'd written it. So. Yeah. This is good. I ate. I drank. I wondered why love is so hard and life is so short. Oh, fucking very Christmas. existential. Come on. Come on. Christmas can be a tough time of the year. Christmas is really tough mm. for some people. You know, this is not a happy Christmas episode, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I eventually went to bed. The room was warm and out and I was ready to sleep. The sound of the sea ebbed into the flow of my dreams. I woke from a dead sleep and dead darkness to hear, what? What can I hear? It sounded like a ball bearing or a marble rolling on the bare floor above my head. It rolled hard on hard and then hit the wall. I don't really know what hard on hard means. Hard on hard? Yeah. So what the ball... I was going to just... I was going to style it out then and just... But you just couldn't. I couldn't. You couldn't go it. further. No, I you didn't You need know to be gonna... clear. Yeah. What's, hard, what's on hard, hard on hard? Like, I'm assuming, like, this is the marble. Oh! Uh, and then it hits that. <gasps> do you know what I mean? I hate it. That. That's horrible. <laughs> Where do you keep that at home? <laughs> I don't know. Um, <laughs> Up my that's ass. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it was like in my vagina, <laughs> bitches. Try and call me out on it. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> that was very funny. No, that was very funny. I enjoyed oh, that Christ. loads. Please carry on. Okay. Hard on hard. It rolled hard on hard, then hit the wall. Then it rolled again in the other direction. This might not have mattered, except that the other direction was upwards. How did they know that? How you've got, they know you've the, got a lot of questions for me and I don't okay, know the You don't answers. know the answers. Okay, carry on. <laughs> Things can come loose and roll downwards, but they cannot come loose and roll upwards. Science. That is true. Science, baby. Education. Unless someone... That thought was so unwelcome that I dismissed it along with the law of gravity. <sighs> Whatever was rolling over my head must be a natural dislodging. The house was drafty and unused. The attics... What? The attics were under the eaves. Yeah. This fucking bitch chats shit. <laughs> what do you mean, yeah? Yeah, un attics under the eaves. The eaves at the top. The attics at the yeah, top. Yeah, but attics, only one. Might have more than one. Remember the bats, it says here. Oh, I pulled the cover up to my eyebrows and pretended not to listen. There it was again. Hard on hard, on hit, on pause, on roll. I waited for sleep, waiting for daylight. It was a brooding day, that 21st of December. The shortest day of the year. Coffee, coat on, car keys. Shouldn't I check the traffic? Because she's going to go pick up her friends from the train station, remember? Because we're all going to have that lovely Christmas together. The second set of stairs was narrow. A servant staircase. It led to a corridor, barely a shoulder width right wide. I started coughing. Breathing was difficult. I fucking feel you, bitch. Damp had dropped the plaster in thick, crumbling heaps on the floorboards. As below, there were three doors. Two were closed. The door to the room above my room was ajar. Ooh. Try to make it as fucking creepy as possible. I made myself go forward. The room was under the eaves as I had guessed. The floor was rough. There was no bed. Only a washstand and a clothes rail. What surprised me was the nativity scene in the corner. Is there anything more fucking creepy than a nativity scene? Than religion. Than, re than religion. Yeah. Quite right, sister. Nothing creepier. Did you say quite right, sister? I did, yeah. <laughs> quite right, sister. <laughs> Oh, we're not getting away with that? You're not getting away with that? <laughs> yeah, no. You sort of, like, 90% did, but 10% I was like, what? Oh, yeah, 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 I gave myself the ick. <laughs> okay, what surprised me was the nativity scene in the corner. Standing about two foot tall. That's a big one, isn't it? Two mm. foot tall. It was more like a doll's house than a Christmas decoration. Inside the open-fronted stable stood the animals, the shepherds, the crib, Joseph. Above the roof on a bit of wire was a battered star. I thought I would carry it downstairs. You're a battered star. 
You're a battered star. <laughs> I thought I would carry it downstairs and put it by our Christmas tree. I stuffed my pockets with the figures and animals and left quickly, leaving the door open. Why? I, I, I've got no fucking idea. For a Christmas decoration. Oh, I see. Okay, sorry, I missed that. Yes, yeah, she wasn't just getting the laugh. Right, okay, she's not just absolutely bonkers. Unlike me. It's <laughs> I had to set off for the station. Stephen and Susie. Oh, no. Yeah, it's true. I'm making a pair. Stephen and Susie could help me with the rest later. Are they like a smug married like? I believe so. Hi. Yeah. yeah. Stephen and Susie are very smug. Susie finishes off his sentences. Yeah. He's definitely under the thumb. Yeah. Stephen wants yeah. to be pegged. Yeah. 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 Hundred percent. Yeah. Stephen wants to get pegged. Hundy <laughs> yeah. p. Susie's terrifying. Yeah. yeah. Would you yeah. peg Stephen oh, if you asked? All day. Peg him. Just try and stop me from pegging that bat. <laughs> Let me peg him. Christmas pegging. Christmas. That's Nothing the name more of the episode. Pegging. <laughs> Let's a go pegging. Pegging. That's good. Yeah, that's a good one. As soon as I was out the house, my lungs felt clear again. It must be the plaster dust. The drive to the station was along the coast road. Lonely and unyielding, the road turned into a series of blind bends and tight corners. I met no one. I saw no one. The station itself was a simple shelter on a long, single track. There were no information boards. I checked my phone. No signal. At last, the train appeared distantly down the track. I was excited. The train slowed and halted. The guard stood for a moment. I watched the doors. It wasn't a big train. This branch line train. What the fuck? (sighs) No, I'm enjoying it. The train slowed and halted. The guard stood down for a moment. I watched the doors. It wasn't a big train, this branch line train, but none of the doors opened. I waved at the guard who came over. Can I just be clear? She's waiting for Susie and Steve yeah, to arrive at the station. On this small train. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So she's turned up. She's got no phone signal. Yeah. But classic. she's turned up at the right time. Absolutely classic. I'm meeting my friends, I said. He shook his head. Train's empty. Next stop is end of the line. So where the fuck are Susie and Steve in? I'm going to find out. I was confused. Had they got off the stop earlier? I described them. The guard shook his head. I noticed strangers. They would have boarded at Carlisle. Asked me where to get off. They always do. Is there another train before tomorrow, I says. One a day and that's your lot. Mm. More than anybody needs in a place like this. Where are you staying? Oh, I love I love the like ominous, like local. Yeah. It's yeah, like that. round these parts. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then you go, have you heard of the house? And they're like, I wouldn't go there, my yeah, love. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Not after midnight. And you're like, Not after what happened to the Joneses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, little Alice Jones. <laughs> she got pegged to death. <laughs> Oh no! Oh no, that's a child again, isn't it? Oh no! (laughs) Hammer! (laughs) I didn't mean. Let's reset the zhuzhu. I meant the husband. (laughs) I meant the husband. Okay. Okay. Good. Uh, One a day, and that's your lot. That's more than anybody needs in a place like this. That's (laughs) freaking me out so much. Where are you staying? High Fallen House, I said. Do you know it? Oh, I. He says, Why? we all know it. He looked as if we were about to say something else. Instead, he blew his whistle. The empty train pulled away, leaving me staring down the long track, watching the red light like a warning. I needed to get a signal on my phone. I drove on past the station. At the top of the hill, I stopped at the car and got out, pulling up the collar of my coat. The first snow hit my face with insect insistence, sharp and spiteful like little bites. Mm-hmm. Minging, in it? Yeah. I looked out across the winding bay. This must be High Fallen House, but what's that? So she's looking at the house as she's driven back. Okay, yeah, yeah, got you. Two figures walking along the beach. Is it Stephen and Susie? (laughs) Are they pegging on the beach? Are they pegging on the beach? Pegging on the beach. It was on Susie's Susie's 30 before 30 list, so maybe. (laughs) (laughs) To peg on the beach. (laughs) Had they driven here after all? As I strained my eyes against the deceit of distance, I realised that the second figure was much smaller than the first. They were walking purposefully towards the house. When I arrived back, it was nearly dark. Oh, it's like Stephen and a dog. Well, it, I, think, I think they're alluding to a child and an adult. Ah, uh, right. And Susie is not a child. And neither Susie's is Susie. not a dog either. She's not okay, a dog, let's actually. make that clear. Yeah, she's not a dog. She's, she's a lovely, independent though. woman. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't need to peg no. to be heard. <laughs> okay, I put on the lights, blew the fire into a blaze. There was no sign of the mysterious couple I had seen from the hill. Perhaps it had been the housekeeper and her daughter come to make sure everything was all right. I had a telephone number for Mrs Wormwood, but without a signal, I could not call Mrs. her. Mrs Wormwood, that is such a classic housekeeper it name. It is a classic housekeeper name. Yeah, I love it. I bounded up the first set of stairs, using energy to force out unease. At my bedroom, I put on the light. That felt better. The second set of stairs stood in shadow at the end of the long landing. 
I could see that the only light to the attic was at the top of the stairs. I, this is my favourite bit. I found the round brown Bakelite switch. I flicked down the nipple. Sorry? What's a Bakelite it's, switch? It's like an old light switch that has oh, a little nipple. Oh, I think I nipple. know it. Yeah, 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 yeah. nubbin. Fli- yeah, nipple. <laughs> I flicked down the nipple. Ooh. I thought it was getting saucy again. I like that. Basically, I picked this Flick the nubbin. A single bulb lit up reluctantly. The room was straight ahead. The door was closed. Hadn't I left it open? I turned the handle and stood in the doorway. The room dimly lit by the light from the stairs. Washstand, nativity, clothes rail. On the clothes rail was a child's dress. Oh. It hadn't been there before. Hello? Who's there? There's someone breathing like they can barely breathe. Not faint, struggling for breath. I mustn't turn around because whoever or whatever it is, is behind me. I stood still for a minute, steadying my nerve. Then I shuffled forward towards the edge of the light coming from downstairs. At the doorway, I heard a step behind me. I lost my balance and put out a hand to steady myself. My hand gripped something wet, the clothes rail. It must be the dress. My heart was beating. I spun around. No one there. Back in the kitchen with a whiskey radio four and pasta boiling. Oh, there's she's some pasta on now. She's got Finally. pasta now. Yeah, it's good. Cause, but now she's drinking it with whiskey. Yeah, lasagna and whiskey's not quite the same. No, is it fuck? Ming, it? She's This woman's annoying me. <clears throat> I examined the Do we the know dress. her name? No, I've got no fucking mm. idea. I examined that we can make one up though. Shit face. <laughs> <laughs> Massive prick. <laughs> No, I'm thinking like Laura. Oh, uh, mm, um, yeah. Oh, no, you know a nice Laura. I actually don't think I do. No, I don't know any Lauras. Emma. Oh, it's going to be Emma. It's Emma. It's going to be 100% Emma. Emma. Emma, Emily, Emmy, 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 Holly. I bet it's fucking Holly. No, I've got a I story a ho- with a Holly. Oh, right. Well, it's so, not Holly. It's not Holly. That's weird, though. Yeah. Okay, let's get this fucking story done. <laughs> I examined the dress. It was for a small child and it was hand-knitted. The wool was smelly and sopping. Whoa. Oh, sopping. <coughs> That's a horrible word. Sopping. Isn't it? Sopping. I washed it out and left it hanging over the sink to drip. <laughs> That's all that means. I guess there must be a hole in the roof and the dress had been soaking up the rain for a long time. I ate my supper, tried to read, told myself it had been nothing. Nothing at all. I didn't want to go to bed, though the snow outside was like a quilt. Well, I don't know what that's got to do with fucking anything. I decided to arrange the nativity. Donkey, sheep, camels, wise men, shepherd star, Joseph. The crib was there, but it was empty. There was no child. And there was no Mary. Had I dropped them in the dark room, I hadn't heard anything fall, and these wooden figures were six inches tall. Joseph was wearing a woolen tunic. This is important for later. But his wooden legs had painted... Putties. I don't know what that is. Wait, sorry. He's wearing a what? He's wearing a... Joseph was wearing a woolen tunic, but his wooden legs had painted putties. Painted putties? Yeah, I don't know what that is. P-U-T-T-E-S. P-U-T-T-I-E-S. Double D-E-S. Putties? Yeah. Painted putties? I am never doing a long story again. (laughs) I hate this. Is the putty bit important for later? Uh, No, I don't think so. I pulled off the tunic. Underneath, wooden Joseph wore a painted uniform. First World War. As if you'd fucking know. When I turned him around, there was a gash in his back like a stab wound. <laughs> My phone beeps. <gasps> Ding. I dropped Joseph, grabbed the phone. It was a text message from Susie. Trying to call you. Full stop. Leave tomorrow. Full stop. Leave tomorrow? Like an instruction? <gasps> Susie's so mysterious. She's so mysterious. She's so great. She plays hard to get. I pressed call. Nothing. I tried to send a text. Nothing. But what did it matter? Suddenly I felt relief and calm. They had been delayed. That was all. Tomorrow they'd be here. I I would read it and get the fuck out. Yeah. Leave tomorrow. Oh, fucking Emma. It's such a stupid bitch. I sat down with the nativity. My fingers closed around a metal object. It was a small iron key with a hoop top. Maybe it was the key to the attic door. I had gone to bed and was deep asleep when I heard the noise clearly above me footsteps pacing down the room hesitate turn return i lay in bed i staring blindly at the ceiling i don't believe in ghosts i wanted to put on the light but what if the light didn't come on why would it be worse to be in the darkness flick that nipple flick the flick nipple the come on guys <laughs> come on come on <laughs> I did not sleep again till daylight. When I slept, I woke again. 
It was almost midday and already the light was lowering. Hurrying to get coffee, I saw that the dress was gone. I had left it dripping, <laughs> sopping <laughs> over the sink. Remember that sopping fucking smelly dress? It's gone now. Sopping like your mattress after a wet dream. Yay, <laughs> call back, baby. <laughs> Tell you what, it wasn't sopping this morning. That fucking dog was cock blocking me. Anyway. Not bitter about it at all. No soppy mattress for no, you. No soppy Rosie's mattress. in the room. Dry as a bone. I set off for the station. There was an air frost that had coated the trees in glittering white. I moved slowly and saw no one. <laughs> in the white, unmoving landscape, I wondered if there was anyone else left alive. What? I know, she's, she's a crazy piece of shit. Oh. I know, she's kind of getting Emma's the lost kids, the plot. She's lost her mind, yeah. Yeah. At the station, I waited. The train stopped. The guard got down. He shook his head. There's no one. No one at all, he said. I thought I would cry. I shook Maybe out my Stephen and Susie are hiding in the bog, you know, to not pay the fare. Wouldn't it be great if Stephen and Susie were the ones chucking balls around and walking upstairs? Yes. Maybe they're in that fucking, what was it, high fallen house? They're not. No, Spoiler, they're not. <laughs> Spoiler, they're really not. <laughs> that actually would be a better ending than this actual fucking story is. I thought I would cry. I took up my phone. I flashed up the message. Trying to call you, leave tomorrow. The guard looked at it. Maybe it's you should be leaving. He said, there's no more trains past Carlisle now until the 27th. Tomorrow was the last and that's been cancelled. Weather. I wrote down a number and gave it to the guard. Will you phone my friends and tell them I'm on my way home? No, fuck off. It's not my job. Yeah. Fucking get your shit and he's drive home. He's got family to feed. Yeah, he's got things to he's do. He's got tiny Tim bringing to feed. The, bringing home the fucking bacon. Yeah. It is quite Christmassy though, isn't it? It's quite Yeah, festive. it is. I'm enjoying it. Okay. Especially because I can see my breath in front of me. I know, yeah, I'm not really enjoying Hoddy it. But that doesn't really matter. On the slow journey back to High Fallen House, I filled my mind with departure. It would be slow and dangerous to travel at night, but I couldn't do it again. All I had to do was manage 40 miles to Inchbarn. There was a pub and a guest house and a return to normal life. The text message kept playing in my head. Had it really meant I should leave? The fact is, I have to go. The house seemed subdued when I returned. The lights are on and I went straight upstairs to pack my bag. At once I saw the lights, the attic was on. Of course it's on. I never switched it off. My bag packed, I threw the food into a box and put everything into the car. I had the whiskey in the front, which is not cool. Okay, so um, she's going to do on, a bit of drink, drink driving. driving. Yes, yeah. A lot of drink driving. Okay. Uh, warning, uh, beware, don't do that. Don't do that, kids. Say no to drink driving. <clears throat> and she stole a blanket from the bed. <clears throat> and made a hot water bottle. So she stole a lot of things and now she's drink driving. It's all, <laughs> it's kind of all... She's on the edge. Shit. It's our Emma. It was only five o'clock. I'd be an inch bomb by nine. I got in the car and turned the key. The radio came on. Died as the ignition clicked and clicked. The battery was flat. Two hours ago at the station, the car had started first time. Even if I had left the lights on. But I hadn't left the lights on. A cold panic hit me. I took a swig of the whiskey. I couldn't sleep in the car. I would die. I don't want to die. Back in the house, I wondered what I was going to do. I must not fall asleep. I noticed some old books and volumes yesterday. As I sorted through them, I came across a faded velvet photograph album. Absolutely classic. Mm -hmm. In the cold, deserted sitting room, I began to discover the past. I fall in house, 1910. Women in long squirts and miracu with miracles. Long squirts? <laughs> women with long squirts. I hate women. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> the women in the 1900s knew how to squirt. Long squirts. <laughs> Just haunted, horny Victorian women. Don't you dare have a go at my squirts. <laughs> <coughs> a horny Victor, I bet they didn't have to fucking compete with a little chihuahua. <laughs> they squirted all day long. And there's me. Not doing... Oh, my God. Anyway. Okay. Onwards. Okay. words. Ah, the women in long skirts with miraculous waists, men in shooting tweeds, stable boys in waistcoats, the garden boys wearing a flat cap. A wedding photograph. Joseph and Mary Locke. Oh, very festive. 1912, he was a gardener, she was a maid. In the back of the album, loose and unsorted with further photographs and newspaper cuttings. Men in uniform. There was Joseph. Remember? No, no. Oh, the putty? Yeah, the putty shit, whatever that fuck that Me is. saying oh. putty gives me the ick. You know um, putty's the light leg warmers, but for men. Oh, of course. That's oh, what very says. 80s, actually. Yeah, in 1910. I'm imagining like some, <laughs> in 1910, but very 80s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were, they were ahead of the time. Yeah. Especially with fashion. <clears throat> Just imagine these like... Like, anyway, let's get gonna, physical. Yeah, with like a pointy bra. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the war uniforms. Um, okay. 
I took the album back into the kitchen, I put it next to the wooden soldier. I had on my coat and scarf, I propped myself up in two chairs by the wood-fired range. I don't know why. <clears throat> it was perhaps two o'clock when I heard a child crying. Not a child who'd scraped his knee or lost a toy, but an abandoned child. I put my hands over my ears and my head between my knees. I could not shut out the sound. A locked-up child, a hungry child, perhaps. Twice I got up and went to the door. Twice I sat down again. The crying stopped. A dreadful silence. I raised my head. Footsteps were coming down the stairs. Oh, God. Just as we hear footsteps outside the box. I hated that bit. Not one foot in front of the other, but one foot dragging in the other joint. <laughs> like the elephant man. Oh, my God. <laughs> I am a human being. I'm burning. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> oh, That's absolutely off. horrible. Yeah, it's violent. It. Oh. At the bottom of the, at the bottom of the stairs, the footsteps paused. Then they did. Then they did what I knew they would do with all the terror in my body. The footsteps came towards the kitchen door. Oh fuck! Whatever was was out there was standing twelve feet away on the other side of the door. Twelve feet. I st stood behind the table and picked up a knife. Mm. The door swung open with a violent force. <gasps> I saw that the front door itself was wide open, the entrance hall like a wind tunnel. Holding the knife, I went forward to the hall to shut the door. The pendant metal lantern hung from the ceiling. A sudden gust lurched in force. I walked out of the front door and into the night. At the drive, I turned and saw them, the mother and child. The child was wearing the woolen dress. She had no shoes. What is it with fucking ghosts and no shoes? Put some goddamn shoeless. shoes on. Always shoeless. You've got clothes on, but no shoot doesn't make sense. She held up her arms piteously to her mother who stood like stone. I ran forward. There was no child. I fell in the snow. <laughs> Emma's so clumsy. She's had a lot such of whiskey. A shoot. Oh, she's bastard. Yeah, she's, she's obviously... such a lot. She's, she's off like, her tree. <laughs> Where can I get a kebab? <laughs> yeah, she, she's just got a knife on her hand. Just being yeah. like a shank a goat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's very. She's a fucking dickhead. Uh, she's winding me up, actually. Um, I'm on my feet again. The mother is ahead of me. I follow her. She's going towards the garden. She seems to pass through the door, leaving me on the other side. Do not enter. Oh. She's going to enter. Uh-oh. I think. There were footprints in the snow. I followed them. They led me to the bothy. What's the bothy? Oh, the bothy. Uh -huh. I'm not correcting you. I'm just saying. Is it the, the bothy? bothy? A bothy's like a Scottish little Okay, um, this is absolutely hut. ridiculous. It's going on fucking... I did no. not even realise it. Yeah, was. a little hut. There were footprints in the snow. I followed them. They led me to the bothy. It's roof patched with corrugated iron. There was no door, but the inside seemed dry and sound. There was a tear-off calendar still on the wall. 22nd of December, 1916. I put my hand in my pocket and I realised that the key from the nativity was there. At the same time, I heard a chair scrape on the floor in the room beyond. I had no fear anymore. In the room beyond, there was a low fire lit in a tiny tin fireplace. On either side of the fire sat the mother and the child. The child was absorbed playing with a marble. Her bare feet were blue, the marble. but she did not seem to feel the cold any more than I did. The woman with the shawl over her head looked at me with deep, expressionless eyes. I recognised her. It was Mary Locke. It was her, what? It was Mary Locke in the... Oh, Mary Locke of... The, yeah, of, of the Mary Locke. and Joseph fame. Yeah, exactly. From exactly. the Velveteen... From the war, from the... Oh, velvet, so yeah. Album. Remember, squirty skirts. Squirty skirts. <laughs> Mary of the, the big, squirty skirts. <laughs> big Mary Squirter. Big Mary Squirter, <laughs> as they call her, in town. <laughs> <laughs> her gaze went to a tall cupboard. I knew that my key fitted this cupboard and I must open it. I did so. A dusty uniform fell out, crumpling like a puppet. The uniform was not empty of its occupants. <gasps> There's a body, guys. Oh. We found a body. There's a body. Oh. The back of the faded wool jacket had a long slash where the lungs would have been. Oh, shit. The body's got no fucking lungs. Like us. Like us right now. <gasps> Relatable. I woke up to blinding white. Where am I? Am I in the car? The heavy glove was brushing off the snow. I sat up, found my keys, pressed the unlock button. It was morning. Sounds like a dream, doesn't it? Outside was the guard. Fine mess you've made here, she said. What? <laughs> Out, oh, outside was I the guard from the train. Here. And the woman who had announced herself as Mrs. Wormwood. Fine mess you've made here, she said. Uh, Wormwood. <coughs> we went into the kitchen. I was shivering so much that Mrs. Wormwood relented and began to make coffee. Alfie fetched me after he spoke to your friends. There's a body, I said, in the walled garden. Is that where it is? 
Ooh. asked Mrs. Wormwood. Wormwood is creepy as fuck. At Christmas 1914, Joseph Locke had gone to war. Before he left, he had made a nativity scene for his little girl. When he came back in 1916, he had been gassed. They heard him climbing the stairs, gasping for breath through froth-corrupted lungs. His mind had gone. At night in the attic where he slept with his wife and child, he leaned vacantly against the wall, rolling the child's marbles up and down. Oh. Pacing, pacing, pacing. One night, just before Christmas, he strangled his wife and daughter. Oh, it's always the fucking man. It, it's husband. always the man. It's always the fucking man. Oh. He left them for dead in the bed and went out, but his wife was not dead. She followed him. In the morning, they found her sitting by the nativity. Oh, so he strangled her, but not yeah, quite. Yeah, he's fucked it up, as per usual. Classic man. Her dress dark with blood, his finger to finger marks livid at the throat. She was singing a lullaby and pushing the point of the knife into the back of the wooden figure. Joseph was never found. So she killed him. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> so, um, Do you, you didn't get it from that. <laughs> Are you going to call the police? I said. What for? Said Mrs. Wormwood. Let the bed. Let the dead bury the dead. Let the bed. Let the bed. Bury de- the bed. <laughs> let the bed. Le- <laughs> let the dead bury the dead. <laughs> Alfie, the guard, went out to my car. It started first time. Of course it did. I left them clearing up as I was about to set off when I remembered I had left my radio in the kitchen. Leave I it, went, leave yeah, it, fucking don't leave. go Why back. Why do you want to go and get your fucking radio? Also, who's carrying on He's a fucking a radio. radio? Fuck off, you stupid, stupid yeah. piece of shit cunt. <laughs> okay, Emma's not Sorry. that bad. Sorry, I hate her. <laughs> you I hate You shit that. cunt. <laughs> you stupid cunt. I went back inside, the kitchen was empty. I could hear the two of them up in the attic. I picked up the radio. The nativity was on the table as I had left it, but it wasn't as I had left it. Joseph was there and the animals and the shepherds and the worn out star. And in the center was the crib. Next to the crib were the wooden figures of the mother and child. The end. Thank fuck for that. La 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 la. <laughs> la 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 la. That was a lovely spooky Christmas tale. Thank you, Thank you very much. Very good, Hannah. What happened to the bats? Where's Susie? <laughs> Where the fuck is Susie in this like, story? I don't know how Susie and Stephen know to get the fuck out. How are they part <laughs> of the story as well? Like, they're like, leave tomorrow. Quite honestly, <laughs> when I wasn't hungover and I was really happy yesterday, yeah. it seemed like a really good idea. Today... Uh, I don't think I can ever say the word bothy again. <laughs> <laughs> or peep holes or whatever it's called. Or squirting peep holes. Putties or... Putties, putties what the fuck? Yeah, putties. Shut up. That's quite a gross word. Yeah, putties. It's like, you know the word... For a um, nice um, thing. Hot toddy. For some reason that makes me feel sick. Hot toddy. I know what you mean. Ooh. The word hot toddy is vile. Hot toddy. Go have a hot toddy and a, and, a, and a hot water body. Yeah, that's gross. <laughs> hot water body. <laughs> I know you're ready for my Christmas ghost story. I am, yeah. Okay. This is like, I'm going to do like two short, like real okay. stories. Yeah, so these fine. aren't like um, like fictional tales. I mean, oh. to be fair, all the way through, I've believed. Lynn's real. I'd love Lynn to be real. I, I want all of them to be real. But this is, um, we've had some stories that are like true. Yeah. Okay. This is a true story that happened in 2014. And I still think about it all the time. My grandma passed away on New Year's Eve in 2008, going into 2009, in the house she'd lived in her whole life. She was an absolutely amazing lady who'd do anything for anyone, but really ill in her final years with Parkinson's. The last time I saw her was the Christmas of 2008, and she was gone a few days after I travelled back to London. I always wished I'd stayed with her longer. If only I'd know that would have been the last time I'd see her. After she passed away, my parents moved into her house and sold theirs. It's a pretty small dormer bungalow with all the bedrooms upstairs. Every Christmas, myself, sisters and brother would travel back home to the north and stay over for a few days. As there isn't a whole lot of room, I opted to sleep in the living room on the pull-out sofa bed, which I'd done many times before. To be fair, the house has always had creepy vibes, but I pretty much grew up at my grandma's house. She would look after us while my parents were at work. So, night one. I wasn't thinking anything creepy or scary at all. Although I did leave a small lamp on. I'm so used to living in London with the constant noises and bright night skies. Up north in this remote village, it's pitch black at night and eerily quiet. It can be hard to sleep, it's just a bit too quiet. I noticed the room was really cold, although the real coal fire had been on and was slowly ebbing away. But I slept fine, nothing really unusual. Night two. 
Just the same as any other night, really. The room was a bit chilly, but nothing out of the ordinary. I was pretty tired after running around playing with my nephew all day, so thought maybe I'd have a deeper sleep if I turned the small lamp off that I'd had on previously. I wasn't scared of the dark or anything like that. I really didn't think much of it. Over the years, I'd slept in that room loads of times. So, I fell asleep around 11pm maybe. I can't quite remember the exact time. Around 2am, I suddenly woke up out of nowhere with a sudden jolt of absolute fear and terror running through me. I was hyperventilating and felt so hot I was sweating. But as I jolted awake in fear, I could feel someone was holding my hand. I slept on my right side with my right arm and hand kind of turned up on the pillow next to me and I could feel a hand in my hand, holding it. My God, I've never been so terrified in all my life. I mustered all of the energy I had, jumped out of bed in the pitch black room and scrambled for the light switch. Obviously there was no one there. I wasn't dreaming anything before I woke up, but it felt so real, I felt a hand. I wasn't feeling ill or anything, but I felt it was just sheer terror. I didn't sleep the rest of the night. and I was knackered the following day. We had a family meal booked at a restaurant and I told them what happened. I expected them to laugh at, me, laugh at me, but my mum and dad looked at each other and said a few weird things had happened since they moved in, including a glass... No, thank you. Thank you. Bye, bye. Bye, Grandma. Bye, great knowing you. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> including a glass that likes to move by itself fairly frequently in the old bump in the night. My mum won't go downstairs at night unless she really needs to. So if it was my grandma who came to pay me a visit, I'm sure she wasn't trying to frighten me, but geez never slept in that room again never will and then it says in the garage of the same house when we were younger my little sister once said that she saw the ghost of a man wearing a military uniform always have to ask her about that there's a theme there I have never seen I'm, I would look one day I just want someone to tell a story where there's a ghost wearing skinny jeans and boat shoes yeah I know with why always with a fucking with a fucking with a top knot? Yeah. That's what I want to hear. Why there was a fucking military? Yeah, uniform. some hipster who died. And if someone does die, if like, anybody out there wants to come and haunt me, don't hold my fucking don't. hand like a creep. Yeah, I no, think that might me, be give the me grandma. Ass a squeeze or something. Yeah, not my grandma. <laughs> grandma, can grandma, you pinch my ass? Don't pinch my ass, please. Yeah, I'd so really that's a sexy that's grandma nice. story for ya. <laughs> sexy grandma. Sexy grandma. Yeah, that's, that was good. Um. I like that. I have another Give one. Give me another one. Hit me. Hit me. Okay, here we go. This story is called A Spy Cam in My Christmas Tree Caught More Than Just Santa. Uh, what? Uh, that sounds <laughs> very ominous. I'd like, yeah. I'd <laughs> like to know. Have you got questions already? I already have a question. <laughs> More than Santa. Santa's not fucking real. Uh, Hannah? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> sorry, yeah, sorry. Oh. Spoiler, spoiler. <laughs> we should have put a trigger warning on that. <laughs> Why is there a spy camera in the tree, please? Well, I'm going to tell you. It's okay. part of the story. I'm really looking forward to it because I have so many questions. Okay, well, on the title. ask away in a bit. I'm going to have to put my coat on. Yeah, it's grim, isn't it? <clears throat> Last year, on Boxing Day, I found a really cool ornament in a clearance box. It had a built-in camera. Oh, ornament, I think, is the American for bauble. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, a spy cat. No, no I see. well, that wasn't in the title, but yeah, ornament bauble. Okay, fine. Um, it had a built-in camera to record a unique perspective on your holiday celebrations. I grabbed the last one from the store's <coughs> dusty shelf and brought it home for less than 10 bucks. I forgot about it until my wife, my two daughters and I decorated the house earlier this month. I told my daughters about the camera and said we'd secretly catch Santa in the act. <laughs> Fucking mom! <laughs> no. <Yeah. laughs> I got mommy pegging Santa Claus. La 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 la. Yeah, underneath. That's yeah. where the story's there we going. Go. Great. More pegging. More I'm pegging. Glad we ended up more pegging. <laughs> I had an old costume in the attic and intended to deliver some gifts in full view of the camera on Christmas night. My girls were overjoyed and went back and forth trying to find the best place to put the ornament on the tree. Bauble, bauble! They had no, no it's was okay. Was that in the story? Because that's like you've got fucking Tourette's. <laughs> Christmas Tourette's! <laughs> bauble! <laughs> bauble! We, we were doing some mess Yeah. yeah. They had no idea Daddy repositioned it later. <laughs> what? <laughs> what the fuck is a daddy reposition? <laughs> also, the word daddy is the most fucking disgusting thing. Oh, daddy repositioned, daddy repositioned it. 
Reposition, um, Daddy. Look, Daddy's re- repositioning his bauble, okay? <laughs> so it could actually catch... That's outrageous. <laughs> so it could actually catch the living room and a good angle. <laughs> oh, stop it. Is that what it says? You dirty bastard, Daddy. It's a dirty prick. In the nights leading up to Christmas, I turned the camera on to make sure everything was working properly. In the morning, I previewed the footage just long enough to confirm the thing was working. Satisfied, I inserted the micro SD card. Oh, how boring, oh, Daddy. Such a I'm going to have to... What's his name? <sighs> what do we think? Brian. Brian. Brian inserted the micro SD card back into the ornament bauble, bauble, and slipped in a new battery <laughs> in anticipation. Does it actually say bauble, bauble? No, no, no. Every, um, every time I read no, ornament, no, 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 no. I say bauble, right, bauble, right, because okay. it reminds me it's a bauble. Conjuring up a ghost of Christmas past. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and he slipped in a new battery in anticipation for the big night. Daddy didn't want to disappoint his girls with a failed recording. Please tell me. Dad. That does not say you've just made that up. No, it says Daddy didn't want to disappoint the girls with a failed recording. This sounds Onwards. like a porn orgy film. Oh, listen, it's going to get scary. Oh, <clears throat> we enjoyed Christmas Eve as a family, playing board games and eating way more junk food than there was room in our stomachs. Like we do every year, we let our daughters open one gift from Mommy and Daddy before going to bed. The girls, still riding their sugar high, could be heard giggling in their bedrooms from all the way up the stairs. From time to time, my wife and I could hear one of them shush the other, claiming she'd heard hoofs on the roof or bells jingling. <laughs> bubble, bubble! Bubble, bubble! <laughs> Eventually, our kiddos dozed off. My wife kissed me on the cheek and headed to bed while I turned off all the lights. I retrieved the costume and tiptoed to the living room, getting ready for my big feature film debut. <coughs> right, OK. I did everything you would expect Santa to do. I ate most of the cookies. I drank the milk, I pet my large stomach and said my ho ho ho's and I dropped a few presents by the fireplace, all in full view of the camera. A pretty good acting job, if I do say so myself. Go on, Brian. Go on, Brian. What a good daddy. (laughs) (laughs) On Christmas morning, the girls came running into our bedroom to wake us up. They excitedly insisted we watch the video before opening the presents. I transferred the footage to my laptop, forwarded to where Santa showed up and pressed play. My girl squealed with delight and jumped in front of the screen, frantically waving at Santa while obscuring the video from my view. It brought me so much joy to see how happy the girls were. I was too lazy to stop the video, so it continued to play in the background while we unwrapped our gifts. I spotted a box I had not seen the night before. It was small and wrapped in blue foil paper I did not recognise. My name was on it, but my wife... Brian. 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 (laughs) Brian. My name. (laughs) Why do I find that so funny? (laughs) Brian. 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 Bubble, bubble. (laughs) Bubble, bubble. (coughs) But my wife seemed as surprised as I was to see it there, noticing my confusion. My youngest daughter spoke. Daddy, that's got to be from Mr. Elf. Sorry? She said, her voice cheerful and bright. I I hate children when the cheerful and bright creeps me out. I was ready to dismiss her elf comment as just another weird thing kids say, but my wife wasn't so quick to ignore it. Honey, what elf? She asked. My daughter pointed to the laptop. (coughs) By then, the video had ended and all that was left on the screen was a preview of the first frame. Oh no. The one that came with Santa, she answered. Mm, I told you, kids bring in the fucking ghost. Yeah. Put them in the bin. <laughs> Put the kids in the sea or in the bin. Put them in the sea. <laughs> Panic struck me like a bird in a jet propeller. No, minging. And it doesn't go well for birds in a jet propeller, <laughs> let me tell you. Is that what that Blended. says? Blended. <laughs> Is, Is that what that says? Oh. <laughs> I was like, this source of... No, I'm adding a bit of my own... Oh, no, that's brilliant. That was good. I know I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I know my wife didn't dress up as an elf. I'm using bauble, by the way, as a safe word now. (laughs) Bauble, bauble. I don't want to call bullshit on something. Panic struck me like a bird in a jet propeller. I know my wife didn't dress up as an elf. I scanned the video, clicking forward and back until I saw what my daughter had seen. There was someone in the living room. He walked into the corner after I turned the lights off. Oh! uh. He stood there watching me parading around as Santa. Well, I just in the back. The video went completely quiet after that. It was as though the camera failed to record a single sound. The strange, tall man in an elf costume stood perfectly still for over an hour, watching the camera from a distance. 
After a while, he walked over to the plate of cookies and bit the head off a gingerbread man. <laughs> bobble, bobble. <laughs> bobble, bobble. What do you mean? Well, he's a creepy fucking elf. Oh, my God. I glanced at the plate and saw his teeth mark on the decapitated cookie. The man then quietly approached the Christmas tree. I thought the audio wasn't working, but as he reached the tree, I began hearing his slow and steady breaths. He reached towards the ornament. And the video stopped. In a terrified frenzy, I grabbed the blue box he'd left behind. I ripped the bow off and tossed the frilly thing away. I frantically removed the wrapping paper, opened the box and looked inside. There on a bed of bubble wrap was the battery I'd put in the camera the night before. My wife took the ornament, bauble, bauble, and opened the back. The battery was missing. I don't know what scares me more, what the camera caught or what the elf might have done after he turned off the camera. That was then. That was very good. That was very creepy. Yeah. Creepy so, well, I, I actually don't think I understand the end. No, me neither. <laughs> so he's taken the battery out and done so more take, creepy shit. I thought... Like, what, uh, what, what does it signify yeah. oh, the yeah, yeah. battery being so he just present? ran amok. <laughs> he ran amok. In I the... find owls quite creepy anyway because it's just grown men dressed as I'm imagining owls. Jim Carrey as the Grinch. Yeah. Kind of vibe. That's vile. That was very, very good. I enjoyed mm. that a lot. That was really good. So... Thank you for joining us for our Christmas episode. It's been weird. It has been weird. Um, we we think those stories are really Christmassy and super duper. Um, we and super duper. We will see you um, and you'll hear us after Christmas. Have a lovely Christmas. Happy pegging. Happy pegging. Bye. 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 Bye.